Oh, Freddie, you hear that? <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I apologize for hobbling up here. I suffered a slight injury, but I would have crawled here if I had to, to do this. Um, I'll try and be brief. When uh, I was asked to make this presentation, I thought a little bit about, you know, well, why are we all here this afternoon? And obviously, we're here to pay respect to and acknowledge the incredible accomplishments of some extraordinary women, right? But I think we're also here because these women, in the truest sense of the word, are their role models. Role models in the sense that they have something to tell the rest of us about you know, how to lead and live an exemplary life. And as I thought about that, and as I thought about the woman I'm about to present to you, um, I was reminded of something my grandmother, another extraordinary woman, told me 50 years ago when I was 16 years old and about to head off to college. And you know, everybody grabs you when you're about to go away for the first time and they give you life advice, your mother and your dad, your uncles, uh, your friends. And my grandmother said to me, son, um, here's my advice to you. You want to be successful in life, be the kind of person who other people want to see succeed. You know, be the person other people root for to win. Made a lot of sense, made a lot of sense, because I'd, I'd known and heard many, many times that you know, we all stand on somebody else's shoulders. But no one had ever said to me, you know, be the kind of person who other people want to lend a shoulder to, to stand on. And um, I remembered it since that day. The problem was she only told me the first half of the formula because she didn't tell me how to be that kind of person. And I spent the better part of the next 50 years trying to figure out how, how do you become the kind of person other people root for because those are the ones who succeed in life. And then, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago, I met Janelle Provo. And she is uh, she's an extraordinary gal. Now, she's bright. She's ambitious, she's talented, um, she's hardworking, she's dedicated. She's all the sorts of things that all of us in this room probably are. I mean, this is a, a town full of bright, hardworking, and dedicated and talented people, but how, how do you get others to want to fall in behind you and assure your success or promote your success? And I watched her. She is, as you can read in your program, she's the President Chief Executive Officer of the Apollo. And she took the Apollo, which is a global brand, right? You can't go anywhere in the world and people don't know about the Apollo. I was in Antarctica at a Russian research station that asked me about the Apollo. Um, but it had almost gone dark a dozen years ago. Janelle took that and put it on her back and assembled a team. And it's now kind of one of the hottest, hippest, Happening, happeningist, is that a word, Christian? <laughs> happeningist places in New York. And it's because, you know, everybody, everybody, everybody wants to see Janelle succeed. Everybody wants to be a part of her success. Everybody wants to help her. <laughs> and I think, having watched this now for a dozen years, um, the reasons can be summed up in two words, humility and grace. So, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the embodiment of humility and grace. Janelle Brooklyn. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. I have been extremely fortunate to work with and for Dick Parsons for nearly 14 years now, first as a member of the Apollo board and now in my role as president and CEO. Dick changed my life as he has changed so many others in his role as mentor. One morning nearly 11 years ago at what I thought would be a, a working meeting to discuss board business, 
He asked me if I might consider taking over the reins of the Apollo. I don't mind telling you that the question scared the hell out of me. Running the Apollo was certainly not something that I'd ever thought about, and immediately my mind went to all of the reasons why this might be a really bad idea. Did I have enough experience? Did I have what it takes? I was a lawyer. What did I know about running a not-for-profit, let alone um, the iconic Apollo Theater, which was really a turnaround situation? Well, many of us know these are women questions. I mean, really, when's the last time a guy asked why he couldn't do something? As I pondered these thoughts with, for what seemed like an eternity, a pregnant pause, as they say in cheap novels, he said something to me which really resonated. He said, I don't know what you want your legacy to be, but I think this would be a worthwhile job to do. The concept of legacy stopped me in my tracks. I had never thought about my life and my work in these terms. Legacy? Did I even deserve a legacy? Was I old enough to be thinking about a legacy? <laughs> now, some 11 years later, here I am standing before all of you, and in preparing for today, I thought about that breakfast with Dick and how the unplanned moments in life can be the most rewarding and take you to places you never dreamed you would go. Recently, I attended a book party for a young African-American author, Sarah Lewis, for her book, The Rise, in which she examines the value of failure in the role of creativity, the process which helps us to convert so-called failure into irreplaceable advantage. In her book, Sarah notes we are never truly walking in straight lines, but auto-correcting and covering more ground than we ever thought possible. This concept reminds me of a story involving a 17-year-old Ella Fitzgerald standing in the wings of the Apollo stage, getting ready to compete on amateur night in 1934. She watched as other performers dance their hearts out because she was originally supposed to dance. After observing these contestants, her nerves took hold. She was really frightened. And she turned to the MC and she said, I, I can't go on. And he, looked her and he looked at her and said, you have to go on. What else can you do? To which she replied, I sing a little. <laughs> well, the rest is history. And Ella's story is one of the best examples I can think of of auto-correcting. No one's journey is a straight path. I used to consider myself a late bloomer because I didn't really find my voice until the Apollo found me. But now I realize that I am not a late bloomer at all, but really rather a journeyman. And in this life's journey, I have been fortunate to have had myriad experience, experiences which in their totality have brought me here today. All of us have different experiences along the way that are just as significant as the perceived goal or destination. As much as I feel I have given to the Apollo, it has given so much more back to me. Life is so much about living in the moment, and sometimes I get so engrossed in doing the work and keeping my head down that I don't really take the time to look up and appreciate the moments that bring pure gratification. During our annual Spring Gala event, I'm usually frantic and much more in the weeds than I would like to admit and probably much more than my, um, my team would like me to be. <laughs> a few years ago, Aretha Franklin, who we were honoring, stopped in the middle of the lobby. And mind you, this was during the red carpet and right after the doors to the public had been opened. She stopped and pulled out her little pink camcorder from her pocketbook which, by the way, she carried every place, including onto the stage that evening. She just wanted to get a video of the murals in the lobby that featured her, in her words, all of her friends she grew up with at the theater. She wanted to remember every second of the moment, her moment. And from, for some reason, this really stayed with me. And with all of the bedlam around me, 
I really, really paused and thought about it. Hearing the excited voices of the young school kids in the lobby on their first visit to the Apollo, or witnessing the light go on in the eyes of young high school students in our internship program are other moments. And I have to say that right now is without a doubt one of those moments. Today I am so humbled to be in the company of my fellow honorees, each of whom is so very accomplished. I want to thank New York Women in Communications for this award. This is such a cool luncheon because it's all about women. I'm a girl's girl, always have been. I really, really value my friends. They make me laugh. They're always there. They always are there to encourage and give me that much needed emotional support. And there are a number of them who are here today and I wanna tell them thank you so much. And I have to give a shout out to my husband, Fred Terrell, who's been married to me for 30 years. <laughs> he's, he's here today and he's always present in my life and he's my best friend and he always, always has my back and I love you. So in closing, I'd just like to wish all of you great journeys and balance in your life. Thank you so much.